Hello and welcome to the second edition of Mosaic, an African American Perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo. Today we will be talking about Montgomery County's fourth annual Civil Rights Bus Tour, which took place the first week in April. The annual tour retraces the steps of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights leaders during the 1950s and 60s in places like North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio, and Tennessee. With us today is James Stowe, Director of the Office of Human Rights, and Rabia Masana, a junior at Quince Orchard High School and participant in this year's tour. Welcome and thank you both for joining us. Glad to be here. Thank you. Jim, I'm going to start with you if I may call you Jim. Absolutely. I see that you were, you initiated the first tour in Montgomery County in 2009. How did you come up with the idea and the concept? Well, it's actually a concept that was borrowed from our friends down in Raleigh, North Carolina, who started this tour uh, now some 12 years ago. Uh, I used to live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I was the director of the North Carolina Human Relations Commission. Okay. Uh, and then moved on to Columbus, Ohio, where you and I met, as it turns out. Right. Uh, but at any rate, uh, took the idea then from North Carolina, my friends then in, uh, in that state, to Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and got such a great, great sort of feedback for doing the tour. And so when I came here to uh, Montgomery County, one of the things I noticed was is that we had too few what I call shared experiences where the entire community can really, really benefit from whatever may be going on. And so this tour offered an opportunity to experience something that all mm -hmm. of us can really can share in. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you really understand the civil rights movement, you see every, your, your namesake for the show, Mosaic, right? right? You see every really color of the rainbow, every culture was involved in this great um, moment in our history. And so when people see that, well, it just fit the shared experience I was looking for for Montgomery County. And so we started here, and the county executive has been very supportive of it from the very beginning. And so it just really, really helped to have that kind of support and understanding about what we were doing. Absolutely. Uh, and so uh, it's been something, as I said before, it's gained more momentum as we've gone along. Uh, doesn't cost anything to the county because it's all paid for by participants who go on the mm -hmm. tour. And so that really helped out as well in terms mm -hmm. of these tough economic times. Absolutely. I can understand that. Let's talk a little bit about some of the places you visit on the annual tour. Can you share with us a few of the places that oh, you have? dynamic enter? places that we got. We start, of course, in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, of course, February 1, 1960, the sit-ins there that took place at four students from A&T State University. Yes. And so we actually visited this time around the Woolworths counter. It's still there from the Woolworths department store where the sit-in took place. And so our participants got a chance to go and see the counter uh, while they couldn't sit down in the seats. They were able right. to kind of see and understand a little bit about what happened in that situation that took place. Beyond that, we leave there and then go on then to the, uh, the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Of course, Atlanta, Georgia is sort of the real sort of stronghold of and the real, real bedrock of the King family. Of course. Uh, King's home is still there. The Evans Baptist Church is still there where he co-passed it with his father. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also his final resting place, both he and Coretta Scott King is there. And the National Park Service has done a, just a marvelous job in preserving all of that uh, available for people to see and experience. It was a great, great job. And across the street from, again, the Center for Nonviolence and Social Change mm -hmm. is the Action Museum that's hosted by the National Park Service. From there, we travel down into Tuskegee, Alabama, uh, the home of the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, of course, the laboratory for George Washington Carver, and mm -hmm. you can see the, the real brilliance of this man. When you see what he's done with the peanut and then with the sweet potato, uh, it's unbelievable what he did and how far ahead he was in terms of education and getting out to the people who, in fact, so sorely needed it. Uh, Booker T. Washington was the founder and president right. of uh, the Tuskegee Institute at that time, right. now Tuskegee University. So he got a chance to visit his home for the very first time. That's very, it was brand new for our tour, so we're very excited about that. Uh, left there and then went to Montgomery, Alabama. The Montgomery Bus Boycott, Rosa mm -hmm. Parks Museum is where we stopped there. Mm -hmm. I also went by the Southern Poverty Law Center. These are the folks who have been chronicling hate crimes and, mm -hmm. and hate groups for the last 30 or 40 years. And so we got a chance to go by there and kind of see the work they're doing then and they're doing now. Uh, and then had a chance, a rare chance, to go by the parsonage where Dr. King lived and, as a matter of fact, uh, where the bomb exploded on his home in the very, on his front porch there uh, years ago as well. And, so, and the indentation is still there. Uh, from that bomb, and so that was mm. exciting for our, our folks to see. From there, we go on then to, of course, Selma, Alabama, ground zero for the Voters' Right Act. Uh, had it not been for Selma, we don't today enjoy the real privilege of voting. Uh, and so we got a chance to be there and experience that. Uh, one of our colleagues there who was on the bridge on Bloody Sunday back in 1965 uh, was there, and she shares her story about what happened on that bridge that Sunday and then the subsequent then Tuesday, and then again the final successful march then from again Selma then to mm -hmm. Montgomery. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we leave there, then headed then to Birmingham, 
where things happen in a very special way because our children, much like Rabia's age and younger, uh, matter of fact, the youngest was about seven years old, was engaged in the marches that took place in Birmingham. Okay. And of course, we lost four little girls in the 16th Street Baptist Church, right. uh, and where a bomb was put in the corner of the church and, and of course, blew up on a Sunday morning. And these young girls were downstairs in the lounge outside of the women's restroom, just getting ready for, again, Sunday worship service. And again, the bomb goes off and they're killed. And so they become really the sort of centerpiece of the whole Montgomery, I'm sorry, the whole Birmingham movement at that point in time. And then, of course, Kelly Ingram Park, mm -hmm. uh, where the kids would go through and mm -hmm. prepare for the march mm -hmm. on most days, leaving 16th Street Baptist Church, where everybody seemed to gather. Uh, and were corralled then by guns and, uh, and then by snarling dogs and then by water cannons. Right. Uh, the famous Sheriff Bull Connor was there. Uh, and he was determined that to, to this movement take place and take shape in Birmingham. And so there is a Civil Rights Museum Institute there in Birmingham as well, all there together. So we thoroughly enjoyed that. Headed then, of course, then down to Memphis, where you really, really get to begin to see everything kind of culminate August 4th, 1968, uh, when Dr. King was assassinated there by some suspected lone gunman. And then there's all kinds of conspiracy theories of still course. get out there uh, about his death and so forth and so on. We finished this year with a little special treat, going to the National Freedom Center. This is Underground Road Freedom Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, mm -hmm. where there is a real collection of ideas and thoughts around the issue of slavery, not only in this country, but slavery as it exists all over the world. And it has, in fact, existed all over the world. So get a chance to see that up front and close. And people really got a real big charge out of that and to kind of see some of the things that happened with our the slaves who were part of this country's history and just to understand all, what that was all about was just a very moving, very moving, moving experience for our, our, all of our participants. And then we head home to Rockville. Mm -hmm. So throughout the trip, we covered some 2,300 miles. That's a lot of miles. A lot of miles. <laughs> That's a lot of <laughs> miles. <laughs> Rabia, what was the atmosphere like when you set foot at some of these historical landmarks, such as Dr. King's, where the church was or where he once lived? Tell me about that experience for you. Um, it was very, it was overwhelming almost to just be there, to stand there and know that this is where Dr. Martin Luther King was born right. or was raised and this was his neighborhood and to see his room, his birth room right. and their living room. I didn't, I didn't get to go inside the house so because there was like you had to buy tickets for that or something like that. So, but just being there outside me along with a few students who also went to the trip and we were just standing there just you know looking at the house taking and, it all in yeah taking it all in it was a very emotional like experience to say i yeah. would imagine i would yeah. imagine it was what are the some of the things that you learned while you were on the trip tell me about some of the things of what you learned and how did it make you feel once you realized you came face to face with some of these very historical and significant events? When you come face to face with these things, I mean, you go through a, a different emotions to say. There was parts, like there were times that I would be angry to know for that the history was like this, but that's history. But also there were times where, you know, I'm happy or, you mm -hmm. know, feeling good that mm -hmm. we overcame it. And right. the fact that still some of the segregation called like de facto segregation right. still exists yes. makes me want to do something, like um, end it, because any type of segregation is just wrong, right. as I believe, right? Yes. And students should be able to go to schools with other peers of other races and things like that, not to have to go to separate schools mm -hmm. and one better than the other mm -hmm. and things like that. So I feel like I want to tell other peers as well so that along, like together, to see what we can do, you know, as to make a change or to do something about it. Yeah. Have you thought about chronicling your, what you've experienced and maybe sharing it in a, maybe in a book, something, some writings with other students because I think that that would be important for the, for the youth to understand that, don't, that haven't had a chance to visit? Right, I was actually, this is just an idea right, as of now, but I was actually thinking of talking to my principal at school, mm -hmm. like writing about my whole experience from 
Greensboro, North Carolina, to all the way Cincinnati, Ohio, and as the days went on, and we visited different museums and such, and what I learned and how I felt and the whole experience mm -hmm. in the whole, mm -hmm. and see if I can present it as like to the student body, like my whole school, and teach them what I have learned, and encourage them to also spread the word to their peers and sisters and Absolutely. brothers at home. So I'm still thinking about it because I'm a very shy person to be able to stand in front of my whole school. But I really would like to do that and give it to her to, so that she can approve it and for me to be able to go on with it and actually present what I've learned to my to the other students and then so that they mm -hmm. too can see what I saw and feel how I felt when right. I was there too. Right and see what they can do too. Can you imagine, Jim, the impact that that would have oh. on other young people? I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Jim, one of the things we did do was that we uh, uh, gave each of our participants a, a journal. And Good. so all of them were journaling Good. the entire time they were gone Good. Uh, on our trip. And so um, I'd be real curious to kind of see what they wrote, but every person was writing and utilizing the, the journals. And mm -hmm. so, um, part of the, the trip is a reflection. Of course. Go so of course. when we visit each of the various venues, we would come back and debrief on the bus. What'd you learn? What'd you experience? Did anybody feel like sharing, you know, mm -hmm. any feelings that you want to, want to share with the end, other members of the mm -hmm. group? Uh, uh, what lessons learned that, that you pick up on? So we gave everybody the op opportunity to do that. And so I think with that exchange back and forth, it really was just something, again, very positive. And from day one, we advertised that this was not a sightseeing tour. This was called the Civil Rights Educational Freedom Tour. Very and nice. And from the very beginning. Very nice. Uh, and before we would go to each of the various venues, we would have then a videotape or documentary that might somehow another highlight what they were about to see. Okay. And so no one went to a, a, a museum or a place, a, a, a venue or what have you, where we didn't already have some orientation about what they're getting ready to experience. Okay. okay. And so again, the whole idea is that we walk away with this very linear look at what took place in the civil rights movement, at least from these very specific viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So you not only hosted the tour, but you prepped everyone to give them an Absolutely. idea. Because as you and I both know, we're pretty much from the same generation. Yes. So you and I have had some experience and have had some conversations about what the impact can be on young people that don't know the full history. It's interesting. Rabia, what was your favorite place to visit? And tell me a little bit why. My favorite place to visit what the, was the Inmond Bridge in Salma, Alabama. Okay. Yeah, and the fact that we actually got to cross in March, kind of like mimic what they had done right. when they were marching. Right. And I remember um, as we were walking, me and this other, along with my peer who was also there, um, she was like, I'm about to cry because it was so overwhelming to know that you're stepping on the footsteps as Absolutely. they once stood and marched and held their heads high and were so strong and brave and courageous. And we were just reflecting together back and forth that if we had that strength, then you would if have, we were right. just like them, right. you know, or if we could be right. like them. Right. Then it would just be so beneficial because, you know, then the world, I mean, what can you do if you are as strong as them? I think you can make a lot of changes as they did. You're absolutely right. right. And we're going to talk a lot more about that because your experiences are absolutely incredible. For those of you who've just tuned in, you are watching Mosaic, an African-American perspective. And we've been talking about Montgomery County's annual civil rights bus tour. I'm your host, Deborah Milo, with guests James Stowe and Rabia Misana. We're going to take a quick break. I hope you will stay with us to hear more about this annual event. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, live. our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Serving your community is a great feeling. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center can connect you to hundreds of volunteer opportunities available throughout the area. 
Are you a student, senior, professional, community group, or business looking to serve? Simply visit our website to select what's right for you and get great ideas from past projects with our volunteer toolkits or share a success story of your own. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center. Make an impact in your community. Where will you serve? Welcome back to Mosaic, an African-American perspective. We're talking with James Stowe and Rabia Masana about this year's Civil Rights Bus Tour. Rabia, tell me something. Tell me why you think it's important for students of all ages to participate in this bus tour. And Jim, I'm going to ask you the same question too because sure. I'd like to get both perspectives, but I'm going to start with Rabia. Tell me why you think it's important for everyone to be able to participate in this. Why other students should also, and I encourage, I even started encouraging my friends as soon as I got back Good. home to also go next year, and my sisters, I have four sisters, that we should all just go back there together, is because there is so much history to learn that is not in our textbooks currently, mm -hmm. like as of now, mm -hmm. and also they're not, we haven't been taught, we haven't heard it, that many names and people who are very important who were who contributed to black history they're also like they're like unsaid voice or unsung voices unsung, to say right, yeah exactly right. and it's very important for those in order to get a better understanding of the whole history of this country's history mm -hmm. is to know you know black history mm -hmm. exactly and mm -hmm. to know it to 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 be able to really know it not just what we learn in school, because that is not enough. It's barely nothing, because I found myself that I didn't even know what I thought I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what I knew was so, like, so small that the story, like, once they, like, you know, presented or, like, once I saw what really happened, it's more than what I learned in school and because we don't have time to uncover all the history. So with of this course. tour, within one week, you can, you'll can be amazed of what you can learn and get out of it as an experience. What I hear you saying is that there's a difference between textbook history and living history. Right. And this is what Director Stowe's trip, this is what this does. It brings everything to life for you. Yeah. yeah well, well said. I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And we have a good fortune, I mean, I have it too much longer, uh, to have participants who were actually there, uh, mm -hmm. who were sharing yes. their stories with yes. us. And so our, our participants got a chance to uh, mm -hmm. hear, for instance, the Reverend C.T. Vivian, uh, who was one of the lieutenants mm -hmm. for Dr. King, who really was at the, th the real uh, apex of what was going on in mm -hmm. uh, Selma, Alabama, with the Voting Rights Act and so forth. Uh, so they got a chance to kind of not only to hear him, but talk to him, ask questions of him. And so he was able to set the record straight on so many different things. Good. Another colleague of ours, Joanne Bland, who was one I mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. who was on the bridge on Bloody Sunday. I mean, she shared the story about what took place, what happened, because she was there. And so the perspective is very, very different. Mm -hmm. We learn as an example, uh, Brown's Chapel, which is where they gathered in Selma, for instance, was in the middle of a public housing project. Uh, when you ask yourself, well, why was that significant? Well, significant so that was, again, everything was strategic. It was not it didn't just right. happened. That's right. Everything was very well thought through, very well planned. That's right. So if you have then an event, a gathering in a public housing complex, what are you going to always have? You're going to always have people. Absolutely. And so they never hurt for an audience because people were there. And so all this made sense. And so when you get that in your spirit and understand all that, it just really, really kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. Another thing we learned, at least from her perspective, uh, uh, Jimmy Lee Jackson was one of the people who first persons killed in, in Selma, Alabama. And word goes that a police officer beaten up Jimmy Lee Jackson's mm -hmm. grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and that Jimmy Lee Jackson's grandmother then reached over to try to protect her husband. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy Lee then tried to, in fact, protect her mm -hmm. and also ended up shooting then again Jimmy Lee. Turns out that the woman who was protecting was actually his mother who was protecting her father. Uh, not the other way around. And so just little things like that, you know, just again, just, just sort of when not challenged, not corrected, they became the fact as opposed to, again, of course. Uh, uh, not the facts. Of course. And so just things like that that I, I, our, our kids learn. And, and I should tell you, too, that you were talking earlier on about who should go on this tour. Everybody ought to go on the tour. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Because what they find out, again, is every race, every culture, most religious groups all were involved in this movement. That's right. And when we talk about it from the perspective of being black history, it really is American, American history. history. Yeah. Because this doesn't happen 
the world we live in today is shaped so very, very differently. And so what we try to share on this tour is that all of you, every single one of you in Montgomery County, where we're blessed with so many different races and faces in our county, one of the most diverse counties in the state of Maryland, indeed the country, mm -hmm. when we see that every one of us has ownership to this story, when mm -hmm. they actually can see it, oh, it comes alive. You said, coming alive, absolutely, it comes alive. It doesn't become something dead in some sort of textbook. It becomes meaningful things that happen to real people who had real names and addresses and ways of being involved in their communities and so forth. And so it takes on that kind of form. And so everybody ought to go. Everybody ought to go and have this experience uh, and be able then to benefit from the stories I as mentioned earlier on told in this kind of way because when you see one event after another, you begin to understand then how things happened the way they did. And again, it was strategic. It was thought through, it was planned, and when even things went different than the plan, there was a backup plan about what ought to happen or what should occur, uh, should that in fact uh, take place. And so, again, it, it's just to me uh, a marvelous thing. And the last thing is I should say this, that's the Montgomery bus boycott. Think about this for a second. You get then folks to stop riding a bus, to inconvenience themselves for 13 months, 13 381 months. days. That's right. To get us to do anything for a week is amazing. <laughs> but, but to say to yourself, all across that particular community in the city of Birmingham, shut down the economic well-being of that city by not riding the bus. And they did that in unison for, again, 13 months, 381 days. Absolutely. And so those are the kind of things you think about that happened in the time and the place where, you know, if we had that same kind of solidarity today on any issue, there's absolutely nothing that we couldn't do, not only in Montgomery County, but in these United States of America. Rabia, when you returned, right. tell me some of the things you thought about. Tell me some of the emotions that you felt when you got back. When you got back and you were in the safety and of the cocoon of your own home. Yeah. Tell me what some of the things that crossed your mind. Did you find yourself going through a period of sadness? Because I know that there was a, there was a lot of emotion that everyone was experiencing. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about when you got back home. What were your thoughts? My thoughts was that now I have to do something. I remember what a lady that was um, part of Bloody Sunday that we had met in Selma mm -hmm. was, she kept saying something like, we brought you guys here, now where are you guys gonna take us? Something along those words. Good question. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that, as she kept repeating it throughout the tour along with us as we marched, um, I kept asking myself too, like, now with this, with this experience, I know I'm expected. There is no way I can just experience this and keep it to myself or not do something afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's just too powerful to mm -hmm. just stay inside. So I kept asking myself of ways that I need to educate others, my peers and other people in the community of what I've experienced, encourage them to also see it for themselves, because you know, seeing it is believing it. Right. 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 So that's what I'm currently working and still thinking about is ways I can do something out of what I've learned from this whole experience. And there we're starting to get a lot of partners around this idea as well. Uh, we could not do this without the support of Montgomery County Public Libraries. Uh, uh, what they've done for us, continue to do for us. For instance, we have a reading list before people go. Uh, Very good. Parker Hamilton, Very group good. over there, help us out every year, and and so people get prepared not only on the bus, but before they go, with their reading list and books that they can check out and, and be really educated about what they're about to experience. Uh, the African American Employees Association doesn't happen yes, without those absolutely. folks. Absolutely. In fact, they sponsored Rabia to go on this trip. Um, right. We're so very thankful for them and the, all they do, and, and we just really, really appreciate the, the work that they do for us as well. Uh, Lincoln Park Historical Foundation uh, mm -hmm. also helped us out as mm -hmm. well, getting the word out and, and becoming involved and so forth and so on. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Uh, so all of them involved here in this community to kind of make this happen and mm -hmm. we're so we're thankful to all of them who have come on board and we're working now with Montgomery County Public Schools and also Montgomery College also involved Good. as well to kind of really make this thing happen in ways that are meaningful and helpful to all of us. The Martin Luther King Jr. Committee for the county also. So there are so many people out there who are trying to who are finally get ready to kind of just see this thing and see how important it really can be mm -hmm. uh, and far reaching. Mm -hmm. And as you're hearing right now from Rabia, I mean life changing. Uh, we have people on the trip who've been all over the world traveling. And they said to us, and I've got emails and testimonies coming back in even as we speak, saying that I've never quite been on a trip like this, 
Mm -hmm. because it drew out of me so many different kinds of emotions, so many kinds of, course, of thoughts and of ideas course. And, and things that I thought I knew and thought I felt before, thought I experienced before, and now, I mean, it's just different. Uh, and so at any rate, uh, uh, so even for the experienced traveler, this has also been a wonderful experience too. And see, this is so critical simply because we, there's so much we don't know. Just as Rabia said, there were things that she didn't know. Nuggets of information, just like you said, Jim, nuggets of information, what we would call little known black history facts, if yes, you will, yes, yes. to coin to accept a phrase. Yes. Things that you just did not know that we would never have known if we had not, if we didn't have the tour. Right. You know, and yeah. see, it's important to be sure that you take this information, and as you begin to educate others, you really have a chance to show people through your story, because I'm a firm believer in sharing your story. Absolutely. I'm it's a firm important. believer in that. Absolutely. When you share your story, you change people's lives, Absolutely. and I think that that's Absolutely. very, very important. There's one name, too, Deborah, in that vein, Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin. Rustin okay. The name I had not known. Okay. And, and should have known, it turns out. but. The March on Washington does not happen be, 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 uh, unless his strategic involvement is present. This is the 1963 March on Washington I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, he spoke uh, during that day, and it was over 40 people who actually spoke that day, but he spoke, uh, and people may have heard him and maybe didn't hear him, because again, he was really the brains behind that taking place in the first place. The Montgomery bus boycott, Bangard Rustin also very much involved in that as well. And why we don't know about him is, is that he also was a gay man. Okay. And so because of the time, the day that that always occurred, uh, it was not something for which a lot of people knew about of or course. could present of out course. front. Of course, of uh, course. Um, and went through a long series of issues back and forth with Dr. King and others about his presence and being involved because folk had an issue with that in those days. But had it not been for him and his very unique skill sets for organization and strategic thinking, these things don't occur. Not occur, they don't occur. They don't happen. Uh, don't happen. <laughs> they don't happen. And so there are people like this, what I'm saying, every facet of life, uh, again, uh, every walk in life was in this movement at some point in time. This is what I call living history, and I hope to see more and more students people everywhere take advantage of this because truly you have brought forth and shared so much important information. One last question, Jim, tell me something. Even though you've been doing this for a while, tell me to this day, how, how moved are you each time oh, you go? Oh, my goodness gracious. You said a minute ago about this whole idea about becoming a living history. And Rabia talked about, again, her being challenged as a young person. I'll say, what, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now with what we brought to the table? Absolutely. Uh, Joanne Bland, so she was talking about. Uh, this, to me, is my recharge every year. This is why it is that I do what I do now going on some 27 years uh, in civil human rights work. Um, I could do no less mm -hmm. based upon what has been done for me. I'm not sitting here in this chair having this marvelous interview with you in this great building in Montgomery County without the movement. I stand on shoulders and, uh, and, and owe so much to people whose name I will never know, uh, may not ever be able then to discover, who paid a price for me. Absolutely. So for me. Uh, it is a, an emotional piece every year. Uh, this is my seventh year doing this. Uh, but every okay. year we come back and figure out why we do this. And I should tell you, too, we have a cross-generational trip on purpose where we got old people, we got our seniors, we got those who are not so old, we got young people all together because this is a family story. And so that moves me, that moves, I think, our nation to a place that we can only yet dream about, that we can, in fact, inherit. Well, this has been a journey, and we appreciate you coming to share your journey with us. Thank you so very much for both of you coming today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guests, James Stowe and Rabia Masana, for taking the time to talk with us today about the county's annual civil rights bus tour. I hope those who are watching will be encouraged to participate in this historic tour next year. I'm Deborah Milo, inviting you to join us again next month for another edition of Mosaic, an African-American Perspective.